start with Coach's opening statement, then we'll go to questions. Um, first of all, I just want to thank the Lord for this opportunity. Uh, man, blessed, blessed to do what I do and, and to work with these dudes. And, you know, life is never, never easy, right? It's never like a smooth sailing or always an upward climb. You know, there are ups and downs. And um, in the summer, you know, I told our staff, let's find guys that we don't mind losing with. Right and uh, and th our guys have been great over the the last few games and you know when things didn't go our way and um, a, a lot of what didn't go our way uh, really doesn't fall on their shoulders it it falls on me as a head coach and not um, not giving them what they needed and uh, these last couple of days we did what we need to do we gave them rest and uh, you know shortened our practices uh, you know that that line in um, Miracle on ice, you know, leg feed, legs feed the wolves. And that, that's what we didn't have, you know, last few games, uh, especially the Oklahoma game. And I thought tonight we had legs because of how we prepared and actually more of what we didn't do rather than what we did do. Um, second thing is our crowd was incredible, right? Like, I mean, I think uh, y'all know this better than, us, better than I do, but I think we lost a few Big 12 games in a row or something like that, and mm -hmm. maybe sprinkled in with a win here, you know, with the Florida and the TCU game. And, you know, sometimes you have fickle fans and they just show up when you're winning. But, man, our students, I, I asked them to show up and they showed up, and I couldn't be more proud of them. And the energy that they gave us tonight, today, propelled us to the win, right? And because uh, Iowa State did a incredible job. I don't think either one of us made shots tonight, but our defense was there even when we was missing shots on both sides and just another huge Big 12 game. And this was a huge win for us as a team. Did the defensive intensity match what you've sought for the last week or so? Um, yeah. You know, I didn't think at Texas Tech we, we played bad defense, you know. Um, for the most part, but it's just, we just turned it over a lot, and so it's hard, you know, to get stops when you're in, out in transition and outnumbered. And so I thought our guys brought energy at Texas Tech. We just didn't have execution, and then at Oklahoma, we just didn't have legs. And so, you know, we told them what we wanted to see it look like uh, today, and we gave them the rest that they needed so that they had legs. And and I thought our guys. Uh, were locked in and, I mean, really, really gave us the chance to, to have a chance to win the game. How vital were the st stops at the outset of the second half and making shots at the other end? Yeah, well, you know, when you get stops, you can get out in transition and, um, you know, and then it, it gets a little easier. In the first half, when we turned them over, we was able to score. And uh, a lot of times in the first half, we didn't get clean rebounds. So they were able to set their defense. And I think them and Oklahoma State, like, neck and neck with the best defense in the Big 12. So, I mean, they do that to everybody. I don't know if y'all watched that Oklahoma State game. It was so impressive to see both teams play so hard on the defensive end when they weren't making shots. And so that, that's really what I tried to get our guys to understand that we're not going to make shots. It's going to be hard to make shots against them. And we just have to keep grinding. And so very proud of the guys. Is there a tougher team against which to make entry passes and just top to wing passes than Iowa State and what you saw today? Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you weren't making shots and still you didn't turn the ball over. Is that difficult to do when you're, when you're not making shots and still be focused enough to, to run your offense, I guess? Um, yeah, you know, like, we just that, that that's our Achilles heel it's the the turnovers and you know I, I told the guys look if we can 11 or less turnovers a game it's going to be hard for teams to beat us and I, I thought our guys really locked in on that and we and they had legs to be able to do what they need to do on the other end and also I think uh, uh, Lipsy had six or seven turnovers you were able to to make it difficult for him to defensively anything in particular uh, you know, sometimes dudes just have bad. He had six assists and six turnovers. Sometimes guys have bad games. Jerome, it seemed like uh, Hill's back was 
really against the wall there at halftime. What was the uh, emotions in the, the locker room, and what did you kind of tell the guys to get a spark in them? Uh, it's just we, we got to rebound the ball. Um, they had more pain points than we did, like, by 10. Um, you know, and then we got to make some shots, you know, like, we can if we turn them over we can get out and run and we'll get some good looks and you know we knew it was a 40 minute game you know it, it was not there was, there was they, nobody in the big 12 really throws a knockout punch unless you're just not ready to play you know and so we knew it was going to be a 40 minute game and a grinder and our guys showed their maturity and their their toughness I don't know, like, I don't want to say, like, there was a must win or anything like that because, you know, I, I, I know, like, our goal on the outset was to get to the NCAA tournament, right? And I still think we have to win one more game in conference to solidify that. Um, but, I, you know, I mean, had we lost this game, it doesn't mean our season was over, you know what I mean? So it was about p playing at, an, at a level that would give us a chance to win. And that, that's all you can ask for every night. And if they give us a chance to win, then I feel like our staff will put them in position where they can make a play. What, what, what went behind the decision to give Desi his first start today? Uh, Ryan put out a tweet, I think, said uh, we probably need to shake up the lineup. There was a quote of mine that says I wasn't married to a starting lineup. And he said it would be a good time to revisit that. So that really spurred me to do that. What did you like about the, the energy that he, that he brought starting? Well, Desi always brings energy. And it wasn't that, like, you know what? I, if I actually checked with the Big 12, because I think Des is the sixth man of the year in the conference. And I think the kid at Texas is right there with him. Um, and I didn't want to cost Desi that. He had sacrificed for us all year long. And so I didn't want, he probably could have started a while ago. And, but I didn't want to cost him the opportunity to get that award. Right, and so I checked with the Big 12 and they said, you can't start more than half of your conference games. And so with five to go, it's not more than half. We decided to make the change. That, that really what it boiled down to. Marquise hits four threes tonight. Do you think it's almost just like he needed something to kind of go right and he started hitting and his shots falling? He just need to get some looks, that's all. He just need to get some, man, it's hard to get. They, they put two people on him every time, right? And they put two people on Keontae every time. And what helps is when Ish makes a shot, Cam makes a couple shots. You know, that, that helps to space the defense out. But, yeah, he just needs to get a couple looks. It was said by the players that Marquise maybe challenged some of the bigs in the locker room. What's it like for you as a coach to see a player kind of show some leadership in the locker room at halftime when, like you said earlier, that, that was a big moment for you guys? Yeah, I didn't see it. Uh, we were in figuring out what we were going to tell them, how we were going to help them. And they were in there, and that's what they're supposed to, that's what leaders are supposed to do. And then after the game, he complimented every one of them uh, for doing a great job in the second half. That, that's what I saw. And then to also be able to kind of come out in the second half and hold your own, if you're Marquise and score 18 points, like what does that kind of say about his ability to contribute while also holding his teammates accountable as well? I, I mean, he's, he's a competitor, right? I, I, there's never been a question of if he was going to compete or not. Some nights the shots fall, sometimes they don't. That's just part of playing basketball. And, uh, but his competitiveness, his toughness, his, his desire to win is never something that's questioned. To be able to insert Desi, what did that do for you guys in terms of your spacing and just ability to maybe put the ball in his hands and play Marquise off of it a little bit more to start the game? I don't know that it did anything because we didn't necessarily start that great. I don't, I don't feel like we started great. So I don't think that that had anything to do with it. Hopefully it just spurred the guys who were on the bench that were used to starting to like give a little bit more when they came in. I thought you know, some of them did. I'm curious. Um, do you drown out the, the noise from this passionate fan base after two losses like you had, um, or is it something you use as motivation? No, I just, you know, I know that our greatest strength is also our greatest weakness. So our passionate fans, you know, in wins are going to be passionate in losses, and that just happens, and it goes with the territory. But I'd rather have a full gym of passionate people pissed at me than an empty gym, nobody caring, right? And so I don't, I mean, I, I am... Very, very thankful for our passion and our energy. I really don't listen to none of y'all. And, uh, you know, I listen to my staff. And, uh, you know, those guys, I got, I got the best staff in America. So what's been the biggest key for your coach to stay together and kind of stay in a fight throughout the last four 
I mean, we worked really, really hard, <laughs> you know, in the off season. And, you know, all of our goals are still ahead of us. And um, y'all, I mean, y'all, our fans, everybody on the outside wants to, want us to win every game and then play, like, great. Like, you know, I mean, even when we win, well, so-and-so didn't play that well today. What do you think that was? You know, like, like shoot, we just trying to win basketball games, like, by one. If we win by one, we're going to be really, really happy. And some nights we're not going to win. And that just is part of being a competitor, right? The, the key is that you fight every night. And so it, it wasn't like we were just going to stop playing because things weren't going our way. You don't do that in life. This is, these are life lessons more than basketball lessons that these guys are learning that you got to stay in it, right? Things aren't going to go your way. And when you're a husband, you know, and you got kids and you got to get up and go to work, if you're sick, you know, you still got to get up and go to work. <laughs> you don't get to stay at home and sleep and say, I ain't feeling well, you know, and, and that, those are the things that I hope that they're taking from this that's going to help them. And they're going to get up and go to work, and they're going to come back home, and when things are tough, they're not going to run. They're not going to stop. They're not going to quit, you know, and that, that's what, that to me, that's the, the, the bigger lesson that I hope our guys are learning in all of this. And, I mean, we got a pretty good basketball team. You know, and we're going we're gonna to win a few more games and we're going to be ready, you know, when the NCAA tournament rolls around. And uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I know we're going to compete. You complimented your, your scout team a week or so ago. But, but more specifically, what, what has Nate Aubrey done for, for you guys this season? What has Nate done for you guys this season? Man. Well, first of all, Nate is an answer to prayer. And I, I literally prayed for Nate. I didn't know his name, but I prayed for an older guy who had, like, had some accomplishments in basketball that wanted to be in ministry uh, and understood um, the sacrifice that it takes to be a servant leader. And Nate reached out to me uh, via social media, and I did a little research on him, and we talked a few times. And having someone like that in the locker room who speaks truth, right? Well, first of all, he competes every day at practice, and so he earns the guy's respect as a competitor, right? And then he speaks truth in the locker room, and, and it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to tell people the truth of things they don't wanna hear and have them still like keep the relationship. And Nate has the ability to tell people tough things with a smile on his face. And that, that's a talent. Right? And so the relationship stays, they receive it from him, they respect him as a man, they respect him as a player, and he just has helped our locker room uh, so much, helped our staff so much. He, he's just a blessing. I can't quantify it. Was Tomlin kind of quietly pivotal in the, the rush to get the game back even at the very first of the second half? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought we caught him off guard with our 5-1 ball screen, and uh, it's not something that people um, are used to guarding. And it was able to get Marquise an open shot and then able to get somebody else an open shot. Uh, Naquan, get, when Naquan gets in foul trouble, we're, it, it hurts us. And, uh, but I was very pleased that we were able to – he didn't pick up the third one in the first half, so we was able to sit him and still be in striking distance so that he could be more aggressive in the second half. question is are you uh, a little tired of talking about turnovers and then my second question is uh, just how much energy does that bring to the defense when you're kind of winning that turnover battle and getting points off those um, I know I'm, I'm never tired of talking about turnovers because it, it's such a for this team in particular it is it is so vital to winning right on both sides of the ball and it is it's just for any defense any coach will tell you it's it's just there's no defense for live ball turnovers. So if we can cause them, it helps us. And if we can make sure we don't have them, it helps us. The well, I, I'm going to be transparent and tell you, uh, I, I hadn't been working out <laughs> much at all. Uh, I, I haven't figured out a routine yet. Is, this is like, 
I got to get in a routine. So, yeah, I was huffing and puffing at the top of it. I purposely made sure I slowed down through the handshake line enough because if I catch too much of the Wabash, I get tired, like the core, like, starts to. So I, I try to make sure I hit it just right so it's enough and then get to the da-da-da-da. Uh, that, that's the good part. That's, that's the breather right there. And, uh, but I was, I'm just telling you, I saw students lined up. It was cold, and they were lined up early this morning. And um, the response to the video I put out and how they said, you know, they would be there and the fact that they showed up all the way to the corner, the top up there. And uh, I'm, I'm, I was just so moved by their, their willingness to support the team and be there for us. And, I mean, I, I'm just very, very thankful for them. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Thanks, fellas. Go Cats.